Well, good morning to uh, everyone this morning, whether it be those who are here in person, those who are watching virtually, and those who are uh, on the phone. We are kind of all over the place uh, this morning, uh, which is a good thing because it means that we have uh, many people who uh, are able to worship with us this morning, and so we are thankful uh, for that. Uh, we have a couple of announcements uh, this morning. The first is, is that we will have uh, scholarship applications uh, available, and they are due on August 9th. And so that information is available on our website, which is umcmilltown.org. So you can go there and get uh, the scholarship applications. If you know anybody who is going off to college, uh, free money is always good for school, and so uh, please make sure that you, they get the scholarship application and that it is returned by August 9th. The second uh, announcement is that uh, we will have our Vacation Bible School again this Wednesday night uh, from 7 to 8 p.m., uh, so please uh, make sure that uh, if you have kids uh, that they are there for that. Uh, it's not too late to sign up. Again, that information is at the uh, church website, and that is in the feed uh, on Facebook here, uh, so you can just go there uh, for that. The third announcement is we have a Christian Education Committee meeting at 1130 today, so if you are on that, please make sure that you are there for that. And the fourth is for those who are present with us today, uh, we are asking that you leave uh, your masks on while you are uh, here in worship with us. I only take mine off while I'm up here. Uh, just so people can understand me a little bit better uh, on uh, line and uh, on the phone and Pastor Barbara takes hers off when she is singing again just so that way people can understand uh, her when she is singing. I think uh, that is it. Oh, the book study. We are getting ready to cover a new book on Wednesdays uh, from 1 to 2 o'clock. That is done virtually and the topic for uh, the book this time is Meeting God in Different Places, and so we just covered prayer, and so this time we will be covering Meeting God. And so uh, that book, uh, the cost is $5, uh, but if you have the time on Wednesdays from 1 to 2, we would love to have you join us. You can um, reach out to me or you can call the church office, and we will set up a time for a contactless pickup uh, or delivery uh, to your house so you can uh, be a part of that virtual book study. Or for those who are watching from a distance, uh, if you want to join us for that, you are more than welcome since it's virtual. Uh, and we will, I will give you the title of the book and you are welcome to get it yourself. I think that is it. So at this time, I will invite us to bow our heads and hearts for a word of prayer. God, as we enter this time of worship together, we enter as a people that are setting aside this time, whether it be here in person, whether it be in our homes, virtually or over the phone, we have set aside this time to show how important you are to us. We dedicate this time of worship to you and we pray that we would feel your presence during this time with the moving of the Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. For those who are at home, uh, we invite you to join us in singing our opening hymn, number 534, Be Still My Soul.
the church, we pray to you from rural meeting houses, downtown cathedrals, from ranch homes and thatched roof huts, from factories, hospitals, and classrooms. Make your people one. Almighty Lord of the Church, we pray to you with saints of old and newborn disciples, with your church around the world, with men, women, and children. Make your people one, Almighty Lord of the Church, we pray to you, fulfill this in prayer of Jesus, to make your people one. Amen. So for the children's chat today, uh, kids that are watching, I want you to go find something that generates light. And so I'm going to give you a minute to go and do that. Uh, while you go and do that, uh, I wanted to let everybody know next weekend we will have the organ. We had planned on it for uh, this weekend after a meeting with my doctor, which I will uh, talk about a little bit later on uh, here in the service. Uh, but we need to make sure that Pastor Barbara is uh, six feet uh, away um, from Allah, and we need to make sure that Pastor Barbara can be heard. And so we need to do a little bit more planning with that, and so uh, we are going to plan for that during the week uh, to make sure that everybody can hear uh, Pastor Barbara and um, that everybody is uh, safe. Um, so while the kids are still grabbing their items of light at home, uh, I want to make sure I introduce everybody. I am Pastor Josh. I am the senior pastor here. Uh, the lovely voice uh, that you heard is our associate pastor, Pastor Barbara. Uh, she does much more than uh, singing and uh, reading the uh, unison prayer and the call to worship. She does great ministry here and the beautiful music that you uh, heard before service uh, as uh, she played on the piano and she is playing our hymns is our music director, uh, Allah, and she uh, is a tremendous blessing to us here at the church. And so uh, that is uh, who is leading you here in the service. And so uh, we, again, are so happy you are here with us. So I hope everybody has their item of light. I have mine here. I have a candle from my office, and I have creamy vanilla. And you will notice that it is already burned. Uh, I went through my most recent candle, which I think was something... Uh, cranberry related. I'm, I can't really remember, but uh, I love candles. And I love candles for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, they smell good. Mmm, creamy vanilla. Smells so good. But the second reason is, is I love to be able to watch the flame dance, right? And when it gets dark out, particularly during the winter time, if I turn out all the lights, I can still see a little bit and be able to do some work if I need to because there is light. And so what I'm going to talk with the adults about today is the fact that we should be a people that bear light to others, that we should bear the light of Christ, that we should be a people of love for other people because God is 
love. And so that's the message that I have for you today. So the next time you see your little item of light or the lamp that's in uh, the room that you're watching in, make sure you remember that we're supposed to love God and we're supposed to love other people and bring that light to others. At this time, I'm going to invite those of us who are at home to sing our hymn of illumination, number 349, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Now at this time, we are going to enter our prayer time here at the United Methodist Church at Milltown. We have a uh, couple of um, thank yous and uh, celebrations. Uh, the first is I did a funeral for um, Eddie uh, Ballybrook, and uh, his family wanted to communicate uh, to the church their thanks and appreciation for the prayers of our church family. And so I wanted to make sure I communicated that on behalf of the family. Uh, and so the second is, uh, once again, for our frontline workers, those uh, in the funeral homes, those in the hospitals, those who uh, are cops and firefighters and EMS individuals, our delivery people, and those who are working uh, in our grocery stores and different things. Uh, we can be thankful for those who are showing what sacrifice uh, looks like and service looks like and prayers for them and their families. We have a number of prayer concerns this week. Prayers for Kathleen Kennedy, Mrs. P and Linda, those that have to make difficult decisions like school systems, uh, our local government and larger government, those who are dealing with loss like Eddie's family and those who are dealing with health issues whether they be physical or whether they be mental. If you do have any prayer requests, please feel free to send them to the church or send them to me or Pastor Barbara so we can make sure that we get them on our prayer list. And if you want them made public, uh, please uh, let us know so we can bring them up during our prayer time. This time, I will invite everyone to bow their heads and hearts for a word of prayer. God, as we enter this time of prayer, we come as a thankful people. We come as a thankful people that you are a God of grace. As I'll talk about in the sermon, you are a God of a prevenient grace, a grace that goes before, a grace that is there before we even really know. We can be so thankful for that. We're thankful for the power of prayer, the fact that you are a God that is there to listen. God, we're thankful for all of our frontline workers, those who are in the funeral homes, the hospitals, our police officers, our firefighters, our EMS individuals, those who are out making deliveries, those who are working in the necessary stores like grocery stores. God, we pray over them and their families for safety. God, we think of Kathleen, Mrs. P, Linda, 
those that just have to make difficult decisions right now. We think of those like Eddie's family who are dealing with loss. No matter how recent or long ago, God dealing with the loss of a loved one or a loss of change of any kind is never easy, and so we pray for those who are having a hard time right now. We pray for all those who are dealing with different health issues. Whether they be corona-related or not, we pray for those who are even waiting for different results of tests. We pray for their families as well. God, we lift up all of these requests today and those that are still on our hearts and those that were sent in this week as you are a God that is ever more ready to listen than we are to speak. As we take time now to pray the prayer together that Jesus taught the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, friends, before I read the scripture, I feel I need to give an update about my concussion after meeting with my doctor on Thursday night. Friends, I believe in transparency and so I want to be fully honest with what is happening with my concussion. I've gone back and forth with how much I should share, but as your senior pastor, I believe that honesty is the best approach. I had an appointment with my concussion doctor this past Thursday, and after she ran some tests on our telemed appointment, things are not healing as we had hoped. It was a disappointing appointment considering how long ago my concussion actually was. It's now been recommended that I go for an MRI and an eye doctor appointment to receive some further evaluation because of some of the lingering symptoms and possible concerns. Many of you know that I have tried to continue my full-time pace since this concussion and well, I've been able to do that. Part of this is due to my own stubbornness But the main reason for this is due to my love of my calling as your senior pastor and my love of you specifically as the United Methodist Church at Milltown and the community that is Milltown. All this is to say is that it's been recommended that I now take some steps back to allow myself to heal. For right now, it means that I will be taking Mondays off and partially available on Thursdays while I begin to work from home. I will still be in the office on the other days of the week. If I don't get back to you on Mondays and Thursdays, please understand. I'm following my doctor's advice of implementing more rest and trying to heal, getting back to more of my normal self. I understand that this isn't easy for anyone, the church, the staff here, my family, or myself. Frankly, I'm frustrated and I'm disappointed. And I feel like I've let people I love and care about, my church and my family, down. I love what I do, and I love you as a congregation. Being told by my doctor that I have to take steps back was very hard to hear. However, in this case, it is likely for the best, as I need time to heal from this concussion. I fully appreciate your understanding with all of this, and I apologize that this concussion happened and I would appreciate any support that you can offer moving forward. As always, be blessed and make sure to be a blessing. Friends, our scripture lesson this morning comes from John chapter 1 verses 6 through 13. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him 
everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world. And the world came into being through the light, but the world did not recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people did not recognize him. But those who did, they welcomed him. Those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to bow your heads and hearts with me as we take a look at the message. God, as we prepare to reflect on the message this morning, may we be a people of open minds and open hearts, a people that understand that even though we miss the mark, hamartia, that there is grace, and you are a God that is abundant in grace. Be with the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth. Amen. Well, friends, today we get to a very popular band over for over more than a decade in Coldplay. I make it no secret that, well, Coldplay is not one of my favorite bands. In fact, they might be one of my least favorite bands. But this goes to show that we can learn anything from even something that we don't like. But back in 2005, I graduated from high school, and Coldplay released an album called X and Y. And when this album came out, there was one song in particular that really became very, very popular, and it was the song Fix You, the song that we are going to focus in on today. And really what this song and this passage is about, it's about finding your way home, but needing help along the way, about being guided along the way. And the full title of the song is Fix You, The Light Will Guide You Home. But before I get into the song, I want you to reflect on the last time you were lost. Maybe you're great at directions, and I envy you greatly, because, well, I'm not. It doesn't take me very long to get lost. In fact, if you turn me around in a circle and you place me within five miles from the house, I have no idea where I am, and I will get lost. And it's very frustrating whenever we get lost. But that's why we have GPSs. That's why we have our phones. However, they don't always get us there, right? So what happens when we're lost? Our GPS doesn't get us there. We become frustrated with the people who are in the car who think they know better than us. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But then we begin to yell at the machine. We begin to yell at the GPS. We begin to yell at the nothingness that is in the car if there's nobody with us. Getting lost is an extremely frustrating experience because we just want to get to where we're going. I'm often reminded of one of my favorite shows, The Office, where Dwight Schrute and Michael Scott are trying to take baskets to companies' businesses that they've lost. And uh, the new thing that Dunder Mifflin, the company they work for, is trying to do is to get people to buy things online, but they want to show personal touch in business. But while they're going to this company, they get lost and they are using a GPS and the GPS drives them into a lake. And so they wind up blaming everything on the machine. Well, it kind of sounds like us in life when we get lost. But I want to now look at the song as we reflect on this idea of being guided home as we reflect on the lyrics of Coldplay. Fix you, the lights will guide you home. The song opens up like this. When you try your best, but you don't succeed. When you get what you want, but not what you need. When you feel so tired, but you can't sleep. Stuck in reverse. Well, friends, in life, we all have shortcomings. It's called hamartia, missing the mark, or what we call sin. And sometimes in life, it gets heavy. We get tired. That burden gets heavy to carry. But the good news is, is that Jesus says if we turn these things over to him, that that burden gets light, that Jesus' yoke is easy to carry, 
And so that's the good news. The song continues. And the tears come streaming down your face when you lose something you can't replace. When you love someone, but it goes to waste, could it be worse? The song continues. Lights will guide you home and ignite your bones, and I will try to fix you. Friends, the light and love of Christ is something that can guide us on a daily basis. It's something that shines bright, something that in the midst of a dark world is something that we can keep our eyes on and something that we can use to help guide us and make the right decisions so we don't have hamartia or we don't miss the mark. And the only thing, in my opinion, as a pastor and as a Christian, we see it in life that when people try to fix other people, well, it creates kind of a mess. The only thing in life that will fix this world, I believe, is the light and love of Jesus. The song continues. And high above or down below, when you're too in love to let it go, but if you never try, you'll never know just what you're worth. One of my favorite sayings that I'll probably remember from here on out uh, and from the first time that Pastor Barbara ever said it was, let go and let God. And I need to do more of that in my own life, and I'm sure that each of us in our own lives could do more of let go and let God, because our burdens do get heavy, as I just talked about in this song. But if we let go and let God, we will begin to understand what our worth is, as I will reflect on in this passage. We can be called children of God and understand that our value is great. Oftentimes we try to find it in humanity, but humanity can oftentimes be cruel. But God is a God that offers up Jesus and gave up everything for us, and that is something to understand that we have value and worth. So at this time, I want to reflect on the passage that I read earlier, where I'm going to break it down into two passages, John 1, 6 through 9, and then John 1, 10 through 13. And so I'll reflect on the first part, beginning with verses 6 through 7. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. When John the Baptist came, he came to direct people to Jesus and help show who Jesus was, so that when Jesus came and they interacted with Jesus, they would understand that Jesus was the Messiah. We are called to do the same thing, and you're going to hear me say it multiple times through this sermon, that we are called to be light bearers. We are called to be lamps. We are called to radiate Christ's light and love to guide people home. Verse 8, he himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. Clarification was needed uh, for John the Baptist because the Jewish uh, friends had been waiting for 400 years, which is a long time for the Messiah. They had been waiting and waiting and waiting, and they thought John the Baptist was the Messiah. But all John the Baptist was there to do was to show and to teach about what the Messiah was like. And so clarification was needed for the Jewish uh, folks to understand that he is not the Messiah, but that he is guiding them to the Messiah. John the Baptist, throughout John, the Gospel of John, is called a lamp that burns and radiates the light, of, uh, the light meaning he burns and radiates who Christ is and examples of Christ and we are called to do the same. Verse 9, the true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. Friends, Christ's light is still available for all people, even to this day. But sometimes it's helpful for people to see what that light looks like, and that's what our job is whenever we leave church for the day, whether it be here in person or whether it be at our homes. People need to see what Christ's light and love looks like so they understand what they're looking for, because otherwise they don't understand or know. Verses 10 through 11. This light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light, but the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. Sadly, even though Christ came into the world, the world did not recognize Christ. And it goes even further to say that even those who did recognize Christ, that a good majority of them rejected 
Christ. It's almost like uh, parents showing a child this great gift on Christmas morning and explaining how great this gift is, and the child going, no, that's okay. But uh, while that's still true today, sometimes we even do it in our Christian walks, and that's where hamartia and sin come into place, where we miss the mark. See, we just finished reading in our last book, Uh, this book by Don Underwood, the idea of the Lord's Prayer. And in his last chapter, he talks about the idea of uh, temptation, this idea of living for God, and that each day when we wake up, we need to make the decision, is this going to be a day that's dedicated to God, meaning a day that we live where we're going to choose to love God and love others? I don't think that we fully understand the power of darkness, And it's appropriate to talk about during this passage because a lot of times sin is darkness. And sin has this power and this control on our lives. And so uh, when I was doing Good Friday service, one of the things I had us do, because we're living now in a virtual world uh, thanks to COVID, and so I had to get creative for Good Friday. And so what I did was I did a scavenger hunt. And the last thing I had us do was after getting all of these things and doing all of these stations of the cross in our homes or outside, I had us come in with a single candle, turn out all the lights, and then extinguish the candle. Because I don't think in our day and age of electricity, we understand how powerful darkness is. It's all around us. But because of electricity and the flip of a switch, we just have light whenever we want it. But we are born with an innate fear of darkness. Think about it. From the time that we are children, what do we put in our child's room? A nightlight. So they're not afraid of the dark. But what I did during that time was I lit a candle and I extinguished it and I just left it dark for a minute. And that minute felt very, very long to sit in the dark because we're just not used to it. I invite you to do the same thing tonight so you understand the power of darkness. But our eyes are drawn to the light. I have neighbors who light a bonfire almost every night, and when I take Gambit out at night, the first thing I see when I go out is not the darkness, but it's the light of the bonfire because my eyes are just drawn to the light. And that's why we're called to reflect the light of Christ because it shines so bright and people are drawn to the light. Verses 12 through 13. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. Friends, grace is there for all. And as Methodists, we believe in something called provenient grace, this idea of a grace that is there for all, even before we are aware of it. And it's this beautiful idea. It's one of the reasons why uh, Raylan, my daughter, her middle name is Grace, because I am such a firm believer in God's grace. And for those who accept this beautiful gift of grace, it's this idea that we are called God's children. A week or two ago, we talked about the power that God has, that God is this creator. You can be called a child of God, this God that sent Jesus into the world for us, to die for us. You have value, you have worth. So the scriptures that I read can really be summarized with two quotes that I want to read for you from theologians, and Morris is the first one, and they say this, The end of the story is not this tragedy of rejection, but this grace of acceptance. And the second is from Charles Spurgeon, and he says this, Faith is described as receiving Jesus. It is the empty cup placed under the flowing stream, the penniless hand held out for heavenly alms. Friend, we worship, friends, we worship a God that is there, that is pouring out grace like heavenly alms. We just need to put out our hands. I want to close with a story about Catherine Booth. And Catherine Booth, she was one of the founders of what is now the Salvation Army. And the story is told that when she passed away, her funeral had to be pushed back because the visitation went on for so many days because so many people were traveling to come and see her. 
And it wasn't people that were wealthy that were traveling to come and see her, or that were powerful that were coming to see her. And there were some that were wealthy or powerful that were coming to see her, but it was those that were in need, people that she had helped. In fact, some people had traveled upwards of 60 miles just to come and see and to pay their respects to Catherine Booth. When they were asked, well, why did you travel all this different distance to come and see Catherine Booth and to say your final, pay your final respects, he simply said, well, because she reflects who God is, someone who loves. Friends, that is reflecting the light and love of who Christ is. That is what we are called to do. Our theologians this week, Coldplay, have a song entitled, Fix You, The Light Will Guide You Home. Well, friends, I have a newsflash. If you've ever tried to fix someone, it's not going to work. The only thing that can fix anyone is the love of Jesus Christ. So let's be that beacon of light and love and guide people home to the feet of Christ. Amen. At this time, we will sing our closing hymn, number 451, Be Thou My Vision. Friends, I invite you to bow your heads and hearts with me for our closing prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now our benediction. Go and serve your God with patience and passion. Be deliberate in enacting your faith. Be steadfast in celebrating the Spirit's power, and may peace be your way in the world. Amen.